Hello, my name is Father Jacob Rouse, and I'm the pastor of Notre Dame Parish in Cresco, Iowa. For today's Crone Minute, I would like to talk about gossip. I've been in this wonderful community of Cresco for a year and some change, and continually the uh, biggest complaint and biggest problem and biggest hurt that people have that I hear inside and outside of the confessional is the problem of gossip or talking about others or spreading untruths or half-truths or rumors about others. Uh, I think we've just kind of come to accept it as our small town culture. Uh, we just go about our own business or others' business, just continue to going about and just keeping the rumor mill spinning. So um, I think it's time we had a conversation about how to change our conversations. Uh, our minds and our hearts and our tongues, the breath in our lungs, and the ability to speak and communicate and dialogue with one another is a precious gift from the Lord. And I think that we should be using it to its fullest potential, which is truth. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, and he is the fullest expression of truth. The truth will set you free. I uh, named this video Disarming Truth not as a, um, not as a verb, but as a noun that the truth can be itself disarming. Yes, the truth is uncomfortable to have to hear sometimes, but it doesn't always have to be uh, a slap in the face. If you're if someone is trying, if you're going to stop every gossipy conversation and just say, I'm going to leave, I'm not going to be part of this conversation. Well, honestly, you're kind of a buzzkill and you didn't really teach them a lesson. Um, if you're trying to get someone to quit smoking cigarettes and every time they smoke, you, you, you smack it out of their face and stomp on it. Well, you... You know, you, you stop them from smoking, but that doesn't really doesn't help. And then in our racism discussions, um, saying, I'm not going to be part of this conversation, or even any other political uh, issue or dialogue that you would happen to find yourself into, just abruptly stopping it is one way to separate yourself from the lies and the untruth. But I would like to give you three new moves uh, to gently disarm gossip with the truth. First one, it's called the detective. I named this one the detective. When you start to hear someone start any phrase with, oh, did you hear that? Or I heard that so-and-so's cancer came back. You can hit them with in the same gossipy tone, ooh, where did you hear that from? Or ooh, who did you hear that from? Or were you there when, when you heard it? Were you there when they heard it being when you heard it being said? Did you actually hear that? Because then you will cause them to start saying, oh, well, no, I mean, I heard it from so-and-so's brother's sister-in-law. Aha, you have now caught the gossiper in their own uh, little excitement. And then now it just kind of, kind of, just kind of peters out the conversation will. Okay, next one, the Doubting Thomas. This is my favorite one. Um, did you hear so-and-so's cancer came back? Did you hear so-and-so voted for that party? Uh, I don't know about that. Well, I won't believe it till I hear it from them myself. Oh, really? That doesn't really sound like them. <laughs> Once again, you have gently disarmed the conversation. Number three is called the truth or dare or the phone pull. This one is terrifying. Wait, you heard Joni's cancer came back? Oh my gosh, I'm going to call her right now and find that out. And pull out your phone and actually think you're going to call them. Or you could say... Do you have their number? Let's call them right now and find out if that's true. Or even just, let's call them right now and check up on her. Huh. Then they'll be like, oh, no, no, we can't do that. Because then either they're spreading a rumor or they will stop and realize what they've done. Uh, plus, if they're not even in your phone, uh, probably not close enough should, to be talking about them anyway. So those are my three tips. I uh, hope they come in handy. Um, this also can be applied in social media, I know I said this in my homily as well, can you believe my brother-in-law posted another article on Facebook about that thing? Okay, you're gossiping about him. I know it's true. It's true that he did post another article about that thing or that person, but what you're doing is you're spreading outrage and you're spreading um, um, a frenzy, kind of like the media. Um, so what I would encourage you to do is to message your brother-in-law first off and say, hey, wh why are you sending this? Or why are you so interested in this? And not in a like attacking sort of way, like what's going on here, huh? No, do it in a, I'm generally, genuinely interested 
in how you see the world. Please help me to understand. Rather than going around to all your other friends and saying, can you believe what this person did? Or it even works with those who are higher up, who remember all politicians, all church leaders, we see as their public persons. We don't see them as their personal, daily, beloved child of God interior life. We see them as public people. Same thing with actors and celebrities. So uh, I hope this all helps. Use those three little uh, techniques. Um, go rewind it and watch it again. I'll put the, my homily in the description. And um, before you go, uh, this quote is attributed to, uh, what's her name? Eleanor Roosevelt. I don't think that's true. But anyway, this is just, I think this is this about sums it up. So. Go wash your hands.